It's time we got off our assets. Hello again, Vince Graham with the Ion Group here for part six, describing an opportunity for South Carolina. Today we'll discuss performing arts venues, the fourth big idea for Patriots Point, that 400-acre parcel of land at the southwestern tip of the 3,500-acre Mount Pleasant Peninsula. To recap, Patriots Point, owned by the citizens of the state, is about the size of that land area south of Buffane and Pinckney Streets on the 3,500-acre Charleston Peninsula. Patriots Point was described in Part 1. In Part 2, we took a trip to gather information. In Part 3, we discussed the Path to Liberty, a three-mile waterfront park that would serve to highlight important people and events in our state's history. Part 4 outlined the idea of a low country botanical garden, a 15-acre garden celebrating the rich horticultural history of the low country. The last part of our series put forth the idea of the finest front porch in the South, a waterfront plaza complete with an observation tower, headquarters for the National Park Service, and a National Civil War Memorial Museum. The fourth big idea for Patriots Point is culturally significant performing arts theaters. Now, what is meant by culturally significant? These are ruins of the Theater of Dionysus in Athens, Greece, built 2,500 years ago. This theater provided a venue for many dramatists of the classical era. Sophocles, Euripides, and Aristophanes are among dozens of playwrights who wrote thousands of plays which shaped Western civilization. William Shakespeare is the greatest writer in the English language. His plays have been translated into every major language and are performed more often than those of any other playwright. The plays were originally brought to the world's attention in the Globe Theater, built in London in 1599. The original Globe burned and a new one was built in 1614, only to be shut down by the Puritans in 1642. Thirteen years ago, a modern reconstruction of the Globe opened along the banks of the Thames, 750 feet from the original theater. The 1500 capacity theater is popular with locals and tourists alike and dramatic performances and educational programs conducted throughout the year. La Scala is the famous opera house in Milan, Italy. Opened in 1778, La Scala is recognized as one of the leading opera and ballet theaters in the world. It has an ongoing history of attracting the world's finest performing artists. And not to be outdone, Charleston's own Dock Street Theater was the first building in America designed for use as a theater. The first opera, Flora, was performed here in 1735. That's 43 years before La Scala. The Dock Street Theater is an American landmark. No wonder Mayor Riley is so proud of the recent $20 million renovation of this culturally significant performing arts venue. So what kind of performing arts centers are appropriate on Mount Pleasant's Peninsula? Well, it probably wouldn't be wise to compete with the 13,000-seat Coliseum or the 2,300-seat performing arts centers in North Charleston. We'd want to offer something different from the 500-seat Dock Street Theater or the 800-seat Memminger Auditorium. And don't even consider an expense like the $142 million renovation of the aging Gilly Auditorium, which will reduce its size from 2,700 to 1,800 seats. Wow, $79,000 per seat construction. So how might we differentiate venues in Mount Pleasant? How about something like the Hatch Memorial Shell in the Charles River in Boston? Built in 1941, this two-acre site provides a wonderfully informal outdoor venue for concerts and plays. It can accommodate audiences ranging from a few dozen to 60,000 people. And when not in use for performances, it serves as a beautiful green for Boston citizens. Open-air theaters are relatively inexpensive to build. This is one we built on the north end of Westlake in Ion. It's only about a half acre and has accommodated up to several thousand people for a concert. The aforementioned Globe Theater on the banks of the Thames in London would provide another different theatrical experience for South Carolina. And finally, what about a venue for the performance of historical outdoor dramas? These can be found all over the southeast. Here's the Trail of the Lonesome Pine in Virginia, the Aracoma story in West Virginia, the story of Helen Keller in Alabama, the Passion Play in Tennessee, and the oldest outdoor drama in the country, where at the Waterside Theater on Roanoke Island, North Carolina, they have been telling the important history of the lost colony for 73 years. Now, we do have a small outdoor play in Charleston. Every Saturday afternoon at the Old Powder Magazine, you can see the remarkable Rodney Lee Rogers of Pure Theater giving a one-man performance as the Gentleman Pirate. It's a great show, which I highly recommend but we've got more dramatic history that needs telling than any other state. Some ideas. The story of Carolina Day on Sullivan's Island, the first major victory of American forces in our war for independence. The first shot, a telling of the dramatic political and military maneuverings leading up to the firing on Fort Sumter. Emancipation. Up to 60% of African Americans can trace their heritage to an ancestor who came through Charleston Harbor. 
Why not tell the story of the fight to gain freedom for all Americans? There's no end to the stories we could tell. The Swamp Fox, the Hunley, the 1886 earthquake, the siege of Charleston, glory. So here's a graphical depiction, a representation of how these other uses could fit. Say you built something like the Waterside Theater, where they performed the Lost Colony on Roanoke Island, an amphitheater like the Hat Shell in Boston, and a theater the size of the Globe in London. Then taking Patriot's Point with the path to liberty shown here in orange, the Low Country Botanical Garden here, and the finest front porch in the south here, it would look something like this. Waterside Theater, Hat Shell, Globe. These are at scale. Of course, much more thought would need to be put into it, but it does show what is possible if we use our imagination. An outstanding opportunity to advance culture in the low country. It is time we got off our assets. I'll leave you with inspiring words from William Shakespeare. Thank you for watching.